And have you heard about the breaking news concerning Garth Brooks? No. What happened to Garth Brooks? Oh, do you like Garth Brooks? I have a feeling I'm not going oh, to. Oh, you me. have a feeling you're not going to like Garth Brooks? <laughs> well, no. It sounds All like that and a lot of freaking more tonight on the Friday Night Freak Show. Okay, it's not that I like Garth Brooks. I was subjected to Garth Brooks throughout my entire high school career. Garth Brooks is pretty cool. All... Huh? I like I like Garth Brooks music. He's got some bangers. I do. I love Garth Brooks music. I wasn't like I could have given a shit or less about him, to be perfectly honest. But like Thunder Rolls, The Shameless, and all them fucking songs. Those are all great songs. They're oh, classic. Shameless is amazing. Shameless is amazing. It's also a cover, I think. Colin, Colin Baton Rouge, uh, uh, and the thunder rolls and lightning strikes. We shall be free. Fucking Garth Brooks has some bangers. Blame it all on my roots. And that's one of my least favorite because it's overplayed. Ruined your black tie. Basically, you have no clue. Being from Appalachia and having DJed many a wedding and stuff like that. That song has played way too many times. I've heard it way too much. But as a chick, when you're in a bar and you fucking bust that one out for karaoke, you bring the house down. Okay, okay. I, I bet you do, don't you? Bring the fucking house. Have you ever, have you ever heard the song The Red Strokes? No comment. No, what is that? He's playing, it's like he's in a white room, he's playing a white piano, he's in a white tuxedo, and he's got a white cowboy hat, and like they start like throwing paint on him, and shit. It's a really cool music video. That kind of reminds me of the Cat Robo Show video for Why Do You Love Me Now, where it's kind of the same thing. Got ripping off Garth Brooks? No, it's not, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I haven't seen the video, so I can tell you. Well, unfortunately, I'm going to have to break... She's drag queen's painting her, and she's in latex, though, so probably not. Going to have to break the we're in this news about Garth Brooks to you. That apparently isn't here somewhere. What the hell? Oh, wrong one. There we go. Finally. Garth Brooks alleges rape accusers attempting extortion... Due to demand letter he received ahead of the filed suit, a former employee whom Brooks claims requested assistance and turned on him once he was unable to provide further financial aid, filed a lawsuit on October 3rd. In a complaint initially filed anonymously on September 13th in Mississippi, Garth Brooks alleges his rape accuser was attempting to extort him, claims he received a demand letter, Accuser threatened to publicly file a suit against him with fabricated allegations unless he agreed to pay her a million dollars. What's the, the demand letter? See, I need to see that. For the country star's initially anonymous complaint filed on September 13th in Mississippi and obtained by People. The country star claimed <laughs> that the accuser, a makeup artist known as Jane Rowe, who worked with Brooks professionally for 15 years, had encountered financial difficulties upon her 2020 move from Tennessee to Mississippi and had asked him for assistance. While Brooks says he complied with Rose's financial requests out of loyalty and friendship, the country star alleges the accuser's monetary demands then increased when he refused to pay Roe more and meet her demands uh, for salaried employment and medical benefits. Brooks's complaint alleges he was met with false and outrageous uh, allegations of sexual misconduct. In a confidential demand letter from Rose attorneys on July 17th, the letter reportedly included allegations of sexual grooming, creation of a sexual hostile work environment, unwanted sexual touching, and sexual assault. According to Brooks's complaint, the accuser threatened to publicly file a suit against Brooks with the same uh, fabricated allegations unless he agreed to pay her millions of dollars. Allegedly, the letter referenced many celebrity sexual misconduct lawsuits featuring multi-million dollar jury awards. On August 23rd, Brooks allegedly received a follow-up letter from his accuser offering to refrain from filing a suit against him in exchange for a multi-million dollar payout, claiming that should he not meet her demands, he would face exposure of many millions of dollars based on his net worth. 
So it seems like Brooks is the one that is taking action against her. He's very sus. It seems that here's here's another one I'm gonna hit you with. Uh, another facet that may make it seem a little more sus. The day before the lawsuit, Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood sold their three point three million dollar mansion right before the sexual assault allegations. What do you think about that piece of information? Well, they listed it or it finished escrow. There's a big difference. This sold the day before. It's coming from. So then. It, so that. That doesn't mean anything. There's like. <laughs> it's. There's like. There's sold as in you accepted an offer and then you're going through escrow. And then there's that. The, the house changed title. And all of these things has a timeline to it. And the. The timeline, I guess, would be very important to whether lending sussicity or not of the fucking allegations. If there's like, because you could, you can have a, you can accept an offer on a house and then it go through like a 45 day escrow and then 90 day. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a whole bunch of other, I don't put much stock in that just seems like bullshit. Now, apparently it was perfect for hosting 100 episodes of Trisha's Southern Kitchen. I didn't know that she had a cooking show. But so, did they find a thousand bottles of lube? See, these are also a thousand bottles of baby oil. Also, do they not know how much lube and baby oil it takes to fill up a fucking kiddie pool for wrestling? I mean, there's all of these. There's a lot of things. All you can get like a five gallon uh, uh or 50 gallon drum of it or something off of Amazon. It's like buying, buying it by the bottle like that is stupid. Maybe a deal for bulk in that manner. Well, you would think you you think you would get the deal for bulk with the, with the, with the drum of it. This is absurd. <laughs> he is a piece of shit. I'm just making an argument. I don't know that I want to believe. The thing I thought of was like, who hasn't seen lube wrestling? <laughs> Is that what he was using it for? Was he making people wrestle? I wasn't there. I wasn't there. Although, so I listened to Howard Stern a lot and he was talking about how, I guess he got mentioned in an article because he said on, on air a couple of times that he went to a party over at his house. Um, but and he talked about it again the other day. He's like, I went to a party, but the, like they wouldn't even let him in. The, they wouldn't even let him in the house to use the bathroom. And he's fucking Howard Stern. Did he? Did he not do the drink? You got to do the drink to get in. You got to get like roofied. It was a white party where everybody dresses up in white or whatever, and him and his wife Beth went. Oh, and Howard was in like fart man costume. No, no, no. This was a couple of years ago. It wasn't like it wasn't back in fart man days. I Maybe mean, it was more than a couple. He years. doesn't. He still doesn't pull out fart, but you tell me he's not pulling out fart, man, for shits and giggles. No, 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 no. You no. wouldn't. No, not at all. I'm confident in that fact that he would not do that. Garth did not have freak off parties, but Chris Gaines did. Ah. That album was a banger. I liked it. I didn't know that. I didn't know this until like the, somebody brought it up. It was like the. 25th anniversary whatever them dropping that album I didn't I didn't when. know that it was like a movie that was supposed to like it was the soundtrack to a movie that never happened people in my school went fucking ape shit over that they were hella mad that was like the first instance I might be able to remember of like cancel culture where everybody's like fuck Garth Brooks because I went to school with a bunch of fucking hicks and uh but they didn't like him going emo Nope. Mm -mm. Well, I guess it would have made more sense if the movie came out first, wouldn't it? Because like, this, apparently, this Chris Gaines was a character in the movie, and this was like the music he, the character was playing. Yeah, I don't know. It would have made the movie should have dropped first, not the album, because the album wasn't good enough to like be like, oh, it's mind blowing. We gotta see this movie. That'd be like releasing the Hamilton soundtrack before the actual fucking show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did it wrong. 
I remember watching him on like Saturday Night Live. He did that one song. Like, I've still got that song on my playlist. It's it's fucking cool. The the, the way oh, of a girl. Wait, I used to, I rode the bus to school in uh in high well in grade school and high school. But the ride to high school was like forty five minutes, hour long, and um yeah, country every day. They played country on the bus. And like, the bus head was like fully speakered, so front, back, and then the so bus was the bus driver, driver playing it. Well, the bus driver is like obviously they have their seat, and then there's like a little like kind of like a little half like a platform next to her. So one of the like suck up kids, actually, Berta was really cool. Our bus drivers were really cool, but one of like the popular kids or whatever would always like snag the seat next to her, and then they would pick whatever you know they wanted to listen to. Once in a while, we got to change it to the metal station. That was fun. But yeah, country 95% of the time. Well, That's to be. You can also kill a Shania Twain song on karaoke, too. To be fair, like, it's one of the reasons why country is a very popular genre to play in uh, public spaces, like uh, doctors' waiting rooms and shit like it's that. It's generally pretty, like, PC friendly. Not, yeah, it's not offensive and shit. Fucking one of the fucking radio Pandora stations or whatever that my little trim boss where I work was playing like yesterday morning was like full on R&B fucking music. I'm going to fuck you till your pussy trips and the juice is on my chin. Like I was like, love that shit. That's the best. Is the Lady Gaga station on? Hey, freaky people. Thanks for checking out this short clip of the Friday Night Freak Show. Be sure to tune in for the live show Fridays at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Pacific.